all right let's try to um, to explain why why there will be waiting lines in uh, service uh, companies okay so uh, let's have here an example of a fast food restaurant where you know that orders or um, demand on meals uh, varies with the time of the day uh, so here we can see that we have 150 orders so let's assume that one order per customer so 150 customers during that hour because it's a peak hour lunch uh, lunch time and then we have 90 here and 60 between three and four o'clock so what do you think what about the system capacity uh status all right what do you think about that um remember that we we, we need to define the system <clears throat> as underloaded or overloaded um to def to describe its capacity so what do we have here? We have a demand of 150, and we were given that they can serve on average 120 orders per hour. So this is their capacity, right? This is the capacity. So we can see here that capacity is less than demand, which means the system is overloaded. That's correct. Now, what about this time slot where we have 90 orders? It's underloaded, and here it's underloaded right so what do you think at which time do you think uh, you will see a waiting line in this uh, restaurant think about it please all right maybe some of you have answered that you will see a uh, waiting line when the system is overloaded while you are correct here but this is not very accurate right we have already uh, so far we have in our discussions we uh, i may have given you or you may already have this uh, uh, this opinion that uh, waiting lines happen whenever we have an overloaded system and we gave the example of the bank however it happens you this is correct that waiting line starts when the system gets overloaded but when you are describing the system overall, meaning that, like in this case, we can, <coughs> excuse me, we can serve 120 on average, and here we have 150, so this is overloaded. But this is not only what we look at. We also look at, at every moment what's happening to our system, right? Imagine yourself in the bank, there are five tellers the, in the early morning. Only two people are there. Then um, one more guy ca come in. So we have three. Then another guy come in while the others are being served. And then another guy. So now we have five. All the tellers are busy. And a sixth guy come in and the system gets overloaded, right? So the system... Um, uh, capacity status changes every moment and when it becomes overload when when it becomes overloaded you will see a waiting line so let's take the example here where we have the minimum number for number of order 60 all right so yes there are 60 so that means that 60 customers will arrive during one hour but i don't know the distribution of these customers i don't know the distribution of the arrivals is it one customer every minute if it's the case you may not have uh, you may not have waiting lines but imagine that during the first minute or segment or whatever five people just show up all right while you can serve 120 orders per hour that's two orders per minute Okay, what if five people showed up uh, at one time, which is very natural in a restaurant, then you will become overloaded. So here what we can say is this, that the arrivals are random. Okay, you cannot control the arrivals to your system. And uh, due to this randomness, then you, you will have an overloaded system uh, uh, suddenly. Also, another uh, aspect is here very important. Uh, let's also stay with this um, uh, with this case of 60. Assume that uh, just for the fun of it, you you placed a bouncer on the at the entrance, and this bouncer 
make sure that only one person goes in at a time do you think there will be um, a waiting line there yes also there might be a waiting line right because it's not only about arrivals what about the service time you see here when we when we are given that they can serve two orders per minute right so that's one order every 30 seconds but this is on average and this is very important in waiting line and like in any in any firm you always uh, measure things on average all right so if if we can serve if we can uh, serve one customer every um, every uh, 30 seconds that what this is on average what if a customer come in and he cannot decide what he wants it takes his time and maybe he has his kids with him and they are crying they want this they want that so it may take him like five minutes you see so it's not it's not they cannot serve two customers per minute anymore so this is very important and this is where the service duration comes into the picture we have a variation we have a varying service duration that we cannot also control why because what determines service duration is your system that's correct but also the interaction with the customers that you cannot predict at all all right so whenever we have high variations in the arrival rate a high variation in the service rate you will your system becomes overloaded temporarily right at at a very fraction of time and that's when you will have a waiting line all right this is very very important for you to understand guys uh, that waiting lines happens even if you have on average an underloaded system but this underloaded system in fact can become uh, overloaded and then you will see waiting lines all right let's see what are the implications on uh, on the management let me ask you this question or ask yourself this question what do you feel when you wait in line think about it think about all these times that you were waiting um, for example in the bank in a restaurant uh, in the cafeteria etc what would you feel so think about that right we feel frustration we feel bored uh, especially when you cannot really explain what's happening why why it's taking them that much time so there is always frustration there and how this is reflected okay this is reflected by people may leave so you go to a restaurant the waiting line is very long uh, so you decide to leave and you may go to another restaurant to uh, the next door restaurant right so what happens to that uh, business? They lost you, the profit that they could have made from your uh, from your purchase, right? Sometimes also the loss is even higher when they they lose they lose the goodwill, okay, the, the the their name, and sometimes you also lose salaries when people waiting are your own employees. We will discuss one example that illustrates what do I mean by this. Now, how can a um, management avoid waiting lines? They can do uh, two main uh, measures, either reduce the service duration or increase the number of servers to increase your capacity. So instead of having five tellers, if you always have very long waiting lines, then increase these to seven. However, this is not a, a um, simple uh, decision to make. Why that? because there is a cost for capacity we know that yes but we 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 are familiar with cost of capacity right in in any manufacturing uh, firm capacity comes at a cost and a higher cost because in manufacturing we're talking about heavy equipment but why the cost of capacity is very important in the service for one reason which is not there in the manufacturing because if you have a capacity that you are not using it in a service firm you are losing it forever right imagine um, the capacity of an airplane let's say an airplane can fit 300 passengers and only 230 uh, uh, made reservations and you took off with 230 so you have 70 seats that were unoccupied and that's it you cannot recover that right unlike uh, the condition of a manufacturing where 
if you have a capacity to make, let's say, 1,000 units a day, even though there's no demand for that, you do it. You, you operate your machines at full capacity uh, so that you can be operating efficiently, but you keep all the surplus in inventory. That's not a big deal, but this is not a luxury that we have in a service company. Okay, so I, I hope that you, you're starting to, to have a good idea about what's happening there. So luckily, we have these uh, queuing models or waiting line models that would help uh, us manage uh, the situation where we can always have uh, waiting lines. So what are the goals of waiting line models? The first objective is to determine some performance measures. What do you mean by this? We're going to discuss that in length, but just very quickly, for example, using your models, you'll be able to uh, uh, to expect how many people would be waiting at any time or on average. Uh, what's the average time a customer would be waiting with that capacity that you have, right? This is very important to make some policies. The second objective is to develop a cost model. And what are the costs that are entailed there? We have two costs that are inversely related. We have the cost of customers waiting, and we discussed that very quickly. Uh, where we said that when you have people waiting, they may leave, and that's why we have a cost associated with waiting, all right? On the other hand, we have the cost of capacity, and these are inversely related because you can invest in more capacity, so recruit more tellers, for example, which will decrease your uh, uh, customers' waiting, so it decreases the cost. Uh, but you have a high cost on on capacity, and if you want to um, if you want to decrease your capacity, just decrease your capacity cost, just decrease the number of of uh, your employees. But this will result in more people waiting, and then the cost of people waiting would be higher. You see, so th this is a trade off, and this is the trade off that underlies what we know by the queuing theory, which is the mathematical approach to analyze uh, waiting lines. Now, to develop a queuing model, and you don't need to worry about that because in our case, in this introductory course, we are not developing the models ourselves. We are using models, but it's important for you to understand the background of these models. We need three pieces of information, the arrival characteristics. We're going to talk about these uh, in, in detail, so I'm not going to waste the time here. We need a second uh, category of information, which is the service characteristics. And the third one is what's your waiting line characteristic? What does it look like? Okay, so let's uh, explain each one of these categories.